Welcome back to Future Artist Records Presents. And uh, we had had Kent Young, a music teacher from Spokane, Washington, on a show a while back. I invited him back. And uh, we had talked about the importance of music education before, and we ended up talking about the power of music. And that's where we're going to pick up today, Kent, and we're going to go dive into the power of music. So, power of music. What power does music have? Um, I, I mean, I think... I think you can kind of break the power of music into two kind of two categories. I think it has a power. Um, it, it, well, actually, as we said last time, I think we we talked about the power of music to to um, expand our uh, capacities. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I think it can expand our capacities um, a number of ways. It can ex expand our capacities to understand music itself. Sure. Um, but I think it can ex expand our capacities to pay attention, and it, it can expand our capacities to to um, Understand things differently, um, but the other the other power I think it has, and I think the one that that's well, I think it's just as important, is it has the power I think to shape our affections, um, and frankly express, you know, express um, our most deeply held values, our most deeply right, held, right. and may, maybe even our most fundamental um, presuppositions. But right. um, but its power to, to shape our uh, affections I think is the thing that. Um, as I was saying last time, that, that is, can be a wonderful thing and can be um, an insidious thing, depending, right. on, you know, depending on the number of factors. Right. Now, you, you talked just a second ago about um, the, the power of it to, to create intellectual movements one way or the other, and, and then also affections. So how do genres play into that? Well, I mean, that's that's a good question. Because you know, you had women swooning over Mozart and Beethoven. You had them swooning over Elvis and Mick Jagger. So, how how does that? You know, th those are completely different worlds, and yet they had the same effect. Right. Well, I mean, you know, there there's the effect of of swooning. I think all music has the potential um, to get us to a point of ecstasy. You know, music hits us at, like directly at a at an affections level. Yeah, I know. You know, some people would say at an, an emotional level, which I think is true. But I, the reason I say affections is because when when we're listening to something, we've got kind of we always have this simultaneous um, uh, kind of like translating that's going on. We're we're right, listening right. to it. And we're saying this means, you know, whatever. This means something. It hits us where our loves are. Right, right, and so and we behave out of that. But I think music, you know, music can translate us completely out of ourselves, and we, you've seen it. Oh, absolutely, in yeah. many contexts, yeah, for sure. You know, and it's not always, that's not always the case. You know, music can can have a, a small effect on our affections; it can have a huge effect on our affections. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's the 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 shaping part of it. You know, to say just say that it, it shapes our affections. I think that happens over time, over a long time. Right over the long periods. If I listen to a certain um, genre of music, and quite honestly, when people approach a genre of music, often they approach that genre of music, and they may they may not even know this, but I think they approach that genre of music because all of the things, all of the the things that are held most dear by you know by the people in that genre, by that genre, by the ones creating the music in that genre, mm -hmm. are congruent with the ones that are held by the people that. Listen to it. Interesting. Um, and and so they resonate with with the, you know, they resonate with the kind of the outworking of those deeply held. Right. Right. Um, you know, whatever values. So do, or do you think or, that that those genres have the power to pull people into that, or just attract the people who are already have that bent? I think it's a good question. I, I mean, certainly any any music that. Um, you know, is widely loved. There's always something about it, right? Right. That is is attractive, um, and so I think you know somebody could listen to to a piece of music and and that something somehow grabs them, and so they begin to listen outside of that piece of music within a genre. Right. I mean, right. Right. You know, I think it can happen either way, but I do think by and large, you know, people come to genres of music with a set of, you know, 
and not not that people don't change over time. Sure, sure. Um, but they come with with a set of, of presuppositions, a set of values, a, you know, a set of loves that they just bring. And often, I think music, what it does is it confirms and rehearses those things aesthetically. Gotcha. Sure. So. so, do you think that people come to that purposefully, or do you think that they draw from it as they listen to it? Well, I mean, obviously both. Um, I think that you know there are people that are very self-conscious about the way they think about the world. They understand what they're thinking and they choose accordingly. Yeah. But if you're talking about you know, I work with kids, right, in education. Yeah. You know, kids, um, kids, they they um, receive, you know, kind of a lens through which they, they view the world. Right. Yeah. And that, that's, you know, that comes from parents, it comes from school, it comes from, you know, it could come from church or not. Right. It could come from the football team, from a coach. You know, those things are, are often received and they receive them uncritically. Really, you know, they're gonna receive whatever lens the person they love is giving to them. Sure, and sure. That's yeah. not always exactly the case, but by and large, that right. is the case. Right, right. Um, if there's somebody that loves on them and they, they you know, they can they can tell, then they go, what what you believe, I now believe. Right. And so, um, often what happens in a in a school setting is you get um, students choose peers, and and they'll choose peers. Sometimes it has to do with those those lenses. Sometimes right. it has to do with socioeconomic kind of considerations. Right. I mean, all the way down to skin color, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Um, but because of that, then they've got these kind of communally held you know, values and beliefs, and right. often the music they choose is a reflection of that. Um, the people making the music are saying the same things. Right. And so, and, and you know, I would say that's true both of the texts that are, that are you know, the, the words that are being spoken yeah. or sung or whatever, and it's also true in terms of the, um, the aesthetic of the genre. Right, right. So the power of, the, speaking of, you know, going back to the power theme, that's the powers making that connection with like-minded mm -hmm. listeners. Um, so how then, when you talk about the power of music, can you have people who listen to multiple genres connect with each of those genres? What's the power in that? Is it, is it the way that the music is formed? You, you talked prior about simple rules that all music tends to follow. Mm -hmm. Is that maybe what allows all the different genres to still be attractive at the same time? Well, I mean, each, you know, each genre will have particular things that are attractive. So a gr great example is if I'm listening to speed metal, mm. I'm not listening to speed metal because I'm wanting to, to relax and to, to hear something that, that um, you know, somehow puts me into a state of zen. Right. Right. You know, I, right. I'm not wanting to hear a, a pretty tune. Right. I'm listening to it because it's got an energy, it's got a drive, and quite frankly, you know, quite frankly, many speed metal, like if you're gonna be a good speed metal band, the execution is flawless. Absolutely, right? yeah. Some of the most yeah. phenomenal needs to be. drummers are, are speed metal drummers, and everything is just where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's this power, kind of this sense of power, kind of raw power that comes from it, right? And that might be attracted to somebody, and, you know, for, for various reasons. Right, right. Right, um, so, I mean, you know, that's not gonna be the case, um, you know, listening to, um, you know, I don't know, listening to country music. Right. Right, there, right. There's, um, there's something about the range of country music that, that um, reflects, um, you know, reflects small communities, it reflects home, it reflects, mm -hmm. um, you know, a slower pace. Or, well, <laughs> you know, or it reflects the honky tonk. Right, right, right? sure, and, and sure. And typically yeah. that's more upbeat, it's got yeah. a dance and it's, there's a yeah. rhythm and there's a, there's a there's a certain brightness to the sound, all of that, right? Right. Um, <clears throat> so anyhow, I, I mean, I think that various kinds of music, um, that they're, the thing that's attractive about them, um, and, you know, I think it's interesting. You know, you can listen to all kinds of genres of music. If you can find what's attractive about that music, mm -hmm. you can follow that thread to the presuppositions or to the, the values that are held often. Right, right, right? sure, um, sure. So do you think that the, each genre, and, and I'm kind of challenging 
breaking things down to genre because I know music as a whole has a power. But then each genre, do you think that's just purposeful, focused power? Or is it based on simple presentation? Or is it based on simple emotive draw? Um, because all the genres use the same basic notes. Right. So then where does that power come from? Well, you know, again, um, it, it, it comes from whichever element of music is, is being brought to the fore. Um, so um, if I'm listening to, um, well, I mentioned before that, that if I'm listening to, to dance music or to, to electronic music, mm. one of the things that they're dealing with more than anything else is they're dealing with time and they're dealing with timbre. Yeah. Right. So one of the things that you'll hear is you'll hear a timbre change. You'll have the same repetitive um, pattern, mm -hmm. right? It starts out, you got the same repetitive pattern. It might be just something, you know, don't, 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 right? Yeah. And they'll yeah. change the, they'll change the timbre. And as they change the timbre, that, that'll draw the listener out. Right. You right. know, it can cause tension. It can cause release. And I guess that's, that's probably the thing in music generally. Um, the, the element that has power is, is that sense of tension and release, the sense of, of um, you know, we would say dissonance and consonance. But right. see, dissonance okay. and consonance can either be a harmonic thing, it can be something that happens in time, um, but music has the ability to make you anticipate, um, on the one hand, anticipate what's coming, and then it has the ability to either either confirm what you were anticipating mm -hmm. to fulfill your expectations right or to to thwart your expectations right and in the thwarting of the expectations it can be done in such a way um, that you're actually pleased by the thwarting right it's almost right. it's right. almost a tease right right that can make you you know can make you respond right um, bad music will thwart your expectations and <laughs> and you know, and they're completely thwarted. You're right. Just, yeah, you, know, yeah. you respond with what the heck? You know, I mean, <laughs> right. And there is some of that out there, unfortunately. <laughs> sure, right. Uh, and usually that's done by accident. You right, know? right. So I do think that, that um, you know, great music is done purposely. Right. Um, uh, whether somebody's thinking I'm going to thwart expectations or not, you know, whether right, they're right. saying that, they're at least doing it purposely in a musical way. They're saying, I want to do this, and they're going to expect that. And, so ultimately, the power of music is that anticipation or thwarting, and then it comes down to genre specific in the presentation and how they do how it's anticipated and thwarted. Yeah, and, I, and you know, again, um, you know, back to the speed metal example. Yeah, right. You know, so often it's so driving that, they, that you don't have that same drawing out. Right, um, right, right. You know, it's in, it's raw, it's live, you're going. It's just yeah. energy. Yeah. You know, in, in m many of the songs, yeah. it's just energy throughout. Right. Right. Um, which is almost like being in the midst of a, you know, in the midst of a battle or something. Right. Right. Sure. Um, so that's a little bit different. But, you know, you can use all kinds of different, um, you can use different elements of music to do that. As I said before, you know, harmony can do that. Mm -hmm. In Renaissance music, harmony is what did it. Right. Right. So having having two notes that are dissonant and then having that um, resolve. Right. That that was how how it was done. You can do that with rhythm. You can do that with timbre. You can. There's all kinds of ways. Do you, Do you think that music without? Well, and I I kind of already know the answer to this because it has been done. For, for a long time, but do you think that it's progressed or digressed or, or just is kind of always in a state of flux where music has the power to send a message just by itself? Or do you think that genre specific is more message, you know, can, can drive a message more? When it comes to that, I guess where I'm headed is instrumental music has a power in itself and you can get a message from that and it can drive you to, to different places. But then you add text to it. So when you get to modern genres, what do you think is the driving force? What do you think is the power of the modern genres? Is it the music or is it the music presentation and, and or the is text. it, or yeah. Um, you know, I, I, that's a difficult question. I, uh, certainly what a text does is it, a text gives you um, clarity about what the music is intended to mean. Right. Right. So if I have a text and I'm listening to music, what, a, what the music's doing is it's interpreting how I ought to feel about that text. Right. To some extent. Right. Right. So, um, 
you know, if, if I'm singing a love song, um, and it, you know, the music is being crafted in such a way that I can f that I I can feel the longing of of the line, or I can, f you know, right, what have you. But um, and and um, instrumental music, that's a, that's a more difficult thing, right? Sure. You know, how do I know what an instrumental song means? Except that I would say that that it still has the ability. Um, it still has, by analogy, it has the ability to take you somewhere. If I were to take a speed metal song, and it, forgive me for keeping on this, but it's just sure, a great example, sure, sure. and take all of the text out, there, there's still a sense that I would have of the raw power and energy of the of the music. Right. 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 Um, there, there, I would, if I if I listen to that speed metal song, I don't think most of us that our first inclination would be to say, you know, this is a this, there's something tender. And loving about right, this. right. I think I'm sure. gonna write, you know. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm gonna sing this to my lady yeah. tonight over, you know, with candles, right? Right. right. Um, so certainly, you know, I would say that music can have kind of a range of, you know, if, if we're talking about meaning, I don't even like to to use that, but um, yeah. but um, so the music itself, I think, has a lot of the power. What the text does is that either you know it confirms that, right, or you know. The, the text is the thing to give us the meaning, but right. the music is the thing that, that undergirds it. It confirms it. it. It's the thing that interprets the text for us. How about the, the communicative power of music outside of um, genre and text? For instance, you can have a love song by a heavy metal band, mm -hmm. by a country artist, by a pop artist. They're all love songs, but they don't sound at all the same. So what's the communicative backing of each of those that, that makes them still a love song but a completely different genre and still be able to pull an emotion with a completely different palette of sounds? Right. <clears throat> well, I mean, I think, you know... Does it come it... down to notation? Does it come down to progressions of chords? Oh, well... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it comes, I mean, you know, again, it comes down to, 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 you know, whatever it is about that genre that is being brought to the fore, right? Um, if, if I'm writing a love song in, um, you know, if I'm writing a love song in a country genre, right, the, it's going to be the tempo of the song that's going to make all the difference, right? Okay, right. Because I'm probably right. using the same chords that I would use if I'm writing a song about a dance hall and a, and a honky tonk. Right. Uh, you know, I, it may be, you know, now if it's a sad love song, I might stick it in a minor mode. You know, it might be minor. But by and large, it's going to be the same, the same chords. It's probably going to be the same uh, structure, the same, you know, you're, you're going to have a song structure, the same right, structure right. that most songs are written in these days. Right. That, that really comes from, you know, by and large from folk music. Right. Um, but it's going to be the tempo, and and the, it'll probably be some of the timbres that it, that are brought out, right? But I think that the thing is with genres, you can express a love song in in country, you can express a love song in pop, you can express mm -hmm. a love song, but that that you know, I mean, I think that that's just that's a an extension of the fact that we're humans, and we express ourselves. And love is one of the things that we express, right? And we can express it a number of different ways. Right. But again, the music interprets the text, and, and you're going to find with any genre, you're going to get a different a different text than a love song, right? Right. That's true. If you're talking about yeah, a country song, true. you're probably talking about some sort of, you know, either you're talking about love lost, or you might be talking about something like you know a marriage relationship, or you might be talking, about, right? You know. Um, certain pop genres are going to be talking about one night stands, right? And people will call it, you know, they'll say that's a love song, right? Sure, sure. And it's a so the the world views and the values held are still worlds apart, right? And the music expresses those, right? Um, and expresses them. I think I think they're it's adept at expressing those, right? Um, but you know, but again, it's it doesn't mean that. One's a love song and one's not. Right. Um, what you have is you've got two different views of what love is. Right. Um, you might say one's a love song and one's not. Sure. But the point is, is that they'll be categorized that way. Do you think that uh, music has the power to cause cultural shift without a substantial message behind it? 
just uh, in itself because of the way it's presented. The, the, and the, the thing that comes to mind for me is the punk scene. Okay, right. But well, no, the the punk scene has an overt message. I would I would sure, say sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, you so, know, I I couldn't I couldn't draw that down to a single line. Right. But it it certainly comes from from an entire cultural milieu. Right. right? I mean, there've been books and books written on it. Um, but what I guess what I would say is that that um, again that music, um, you know, confirms and rehearses those things. You know, you'll have you've got shifts in thinking that begin to happen, and musicians will say, you know, as they go, they'll say that's that's new. I agree. Here's a way. Here's a way to express that. Right. And you right, see it throughout right, history. Sure. You know, sure. you look at the early modern period and and. Um, you know, early Baroque music and what happened to music, you know, how it changed. Mm -hmm. It went from, you know, by and large vocal music to a lot of instrumental music. All of a sudden, instrumental music and vocal music were being drawn apart. But all of that came initially from new new thinking. Sure, People sure. began to discuss things and think of things differently. Um, you know, when you get into the... Uh, when you get into the, you know, even the 1800s, really beginning in the 1700s, and you've got um, the rise of kind of the middle class, mm -hmm. which is, you know, it's an economic development, but ideologies changed, you know, radically at right, that time. Right, right. You know, and you've got philosophers that are writing, you think, well, these dusty philosophers, what do they have to do with reality? Right. But you hear in, in kind of a lag time, you hear the music reflecting these philosophies from back here. right. It happens all the time, and in the 20th century, that it's it's no different with popular music. Sure, you know, popular sure. music today is reflecting the sentiments from, you know, from you know a time ago. People begin to to search out the the aesthetic that makes sense with whatever sentiment they're, and whatever thing they're holding dear, whatever thing they're saying this is true. Right. And right. And I think that begins to happen. Now, as an educator, do you have a opinion on the power that you would like to see music have or a direction you'd like to see the power that music has take culture or or education mm -hmm. itself well i think it's a great that's a fantastic question um i think what what can happen is often people so if you affirm that music is powerful i think most people do some people won't um mm. some people say ah, it's just it's just music. I'm just listening. Right. right. Um, but oftentimes, um, and actually, I find that with sometimes students will say that I'm just I'm just listening. I don't even you know I just like it. Right. Um, but by and large, it's because they don't want to be challenged in their in their thinking. That's that's what I right, found. Right. Um, but uh, you know, if you if you say that music has power, all of a sudden you can become anxious and say, well, some music's bad. Right. Right. Some music's good. And, right. But you know, so we got to have people listen to the good music, which is, I mean, I think that that in and of itself is insidious. Sure, sure. Um, I think that humans, that people, students need to be given the tools to be able to have power over music, to be able to to approach music in a way where um, where they're wielding the power. Right, right. And and again, not to say that that you know we don't want to receive music and have it move us. That's the beauty of music. Right, right. We want that. Right. But we don't want to do it uncritically and, un, and, and in a completely unbiased way, um, or maybe in a completely biased way. Maybe that's actually right, a better right, way to put right. it. Um, what, I guess what I mean by bias is, is having, certain, having a certain understanding as we go in. Right. We want to do it with understanding. Right. So that we don't get moved along to a point where, where um, you know, there have been, have been times where uh, involvement in music has has led to somebody's eventual you know downfall, right? Right, absolutely. Yeah. And it isn't the yeah. music itself; that's just part of the cultural push. But right. it has a power. It right. suggests a lot. Right. Um, and so I think that we want to be able to to enjoy it, to interact with it, to interact with it on its terms, but to know what its terms are. Right. So that. Um, you know, so that we can, uh, well, just so that we can do it in a healthy way. Right. So that we can, uh, so that we can enjoy it more. I, and frankly, so that it can have more power. Right. Right. But the right kind of power. Um, so, I mean, I would say, you know, one of the things that I think, you know, I would love to see is I, I'd love to see students. One of the things I work towards is for students to begin to expand from where they are. Sure. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and listen to other things. Um, and so, well, just as an example of, of something that, that I've done before, um, I haven't done it uh, recently, but I, partly is because I feel like I've got, we've got a certain momentum going. Right, right. With my students. But it started with me, um, you know, trying to meet students on their terms and listen to their music and have them tell me about it and ask them questions. You know, yeah. what is it about yeah. this you love? Oh, okay, I see that. Right, right. And begin to, and then go, hey, have you ever heard of this? And take them a step over. And then begin, begin to tell them about that music and tell them why it does what it does. Right. And, and then, you know, three steps later, we can come back to their piece and then I can ask them, how does your music do what it does? Yeah. You know, you said it affects you this way. I want to demystify it to the extent that students can listen to it and understand it also. Right. Now, that can have the consequence sometimes, you know, if you demystify something, people can, you know, it can take the, the sense of kind of, ecstasy away right which is not anything I want to do I want to expand that out right where um, they can begin to enjoy all kinds of different things but enjoy enjoy it from a standpoint of wisdom right if that makes right. sense absolutely absolutely so, you know you've you've touched on a lot of things that I've wanted to present with this show and that is opening up the audience to all these different ideas and different mm -hmm. genres and, and at an independent local level, whether they're educated musicians, uneducated musicians, and allowing them to see the power that each of these artists has right. um, and being able to tap into it and understand that the local independent musician really is a big part of culture and the way mm -hmm. things go. Um, and so that's fantastic having you on here and, and setting us up that way. It's, it's, it's great to hear an educator talk about how important that is and the power that that has. And, 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 and it's great to hear an educator say that you like to tap into where they're coming from and then expand out. And I think that's so important, so important today. So, man, thanks for coming back. Oh, absolutely. This, this was awesome. Oh, it's and been a joy. I hope to have you back again. Future Artist Records presents Kent Young. We're talking about power, talking about education. This is going to open up all sorts of stuff. I can't wait to see what happens next. Stay tuned. We're going to have lots of cool stuff coming your way. Music